Hallelujah. Put those hands together for the Lord. It has been a beautiful time in God's presence. I say good morning to everybody in the house. Please be seated. You are honored and blessed in Jesus' name. I want to... Thank you, Lord Jesus. Alana se freshti pala haskes de bolo teach a most villainy a teach. I have a first mean gavelena vias to for to teach. I am here also to teach again. It's me here to teach. Even in my handmaiden, I want to teach again. I want you to learn. I want you to learn. There are a lot of things I want you to learn. So I want you to come with a heart that wants to learn. I want you to learn. I want you to learn. I want you to learn. Many are still yet ignorant in what I am about to say. So open your heart to learn. Open your heart to learn. You need it. You need it. Do not say, I don't need this. You need it. You need it. You need it. So I've come to teach you. Learn. 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 Open your heart to learn. Let your heart be meek to learn. Do not argue in your heart. Do not argue in your heart. Be meek and learn. Be meek and learn. It's profitable for you. Be meek and learn. You need it. Be meek and learn. You need it. Do not despise it. Do not despise it. It may look so little, but without it, your journey will not be smooth. See you the Lord. Amen. Let's just lift our hands to God this morning and receive of him. Open your heart to God and say, Lord, I receive of you this morning. I receive of you. I receive all that you have to give this morning. I open my heart to learn, to learn. Lord, say, learn of me. Learn of me. We have to learn of him. Receive your heart this morning. Let it open to God and say, Lord, teach me. I learn. I open all my heart to learn. Nobody can teach you, but God can teach all of us. Let your heart be in the learning mood this morning. The Lord is here to teach us, to help us. He wants us to make it. He wants us to make it. He wants us to be in all pleasing to him in all things. Le prasi fatani ma shinda briana ma. Le mbre de ba sapreni ma shepande hasiela ba. Mende bra pote pa shikatan de kasilia ba. Lord, I pray for myself for all trans this morning that I will say all that you want me to say. That your people will be blessed even as we have gathered together. Lord, we have come to your feet to learn. But the teacher and the hearer, this morning you will teach all of us and will be better for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your mighty presence in this place this morning. Thank you for coming to us. Thank you for being here for us. Thank you because you love us so much and you want to make us as you made Christ. We give you all the glory, our Father, this morning. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I thank God for this beautiful morning. It's a blessed morning. It's Father's Day. Yeah. Happy Father's Day to every father in the house. It's the Father's Day. The Father's Day. The Father's Day. Ah, Father. Hmm. Father. Father is the source. Father is the progenitor. Father is the bearer, is the carrier of seed. Father only give mothers to carry for him. So when you bear the name of your father, it's not a mistake. It's God ordained. It's God ordained. 
that you should bear the name of your father as we are bearing his own name. Hallelujah. That mystery of fatherhood, ah, it's only God that can explain it. And in this season, he's bringing us into that explanation of who he is as a father. A father, when you have a father in the house, there's a way he's in charge of the house. Whether it's a man that shouts or he does not even talk. But there's an aura that he carries. That the children dare not go against it. When the mother is there, she's still shouting, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, they'll still be laughing. They can laugh at mommy. Children don't laugh at daddy. You. Oh. Because they know when daddy speaks, he stands. So when the father speaks, he stands. You don't argue against fathers. You receive what they have to give to you for you to be made. If you want to be made, you respect your father and hearken to his voice. Because he has gone through so many things called experiences. That's called experience. The experiences he has gone through, you have not gone through half of it. So when he is talking, listen and hearken. Fathers are to be respected. In the generation nowadays, they are playing down the role of fathers. And it's to waste a generation. You must act into the voice of your father and do. You don't argue with your father. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know where I'm starting from here that this morning. But I believe we need to know that and respect our fathers. They represent God in our lives. When you're giving birth, you become, you bear the name of your father. It's important. Why not the name of your mother? Your mother is not the carrier of seed. Your father owns the seed. Your father owns the seed. He bears you in his loins. Like Abraham carried, um, not even, he carried um, Levi. And he paid tight on his behalf. So what your father does, he does it on your behalf. So pray for your fathers. Directly or indirectly, you are connected to him. His blood. A genie, a je. Hallelujah. Amen. But thank God that the Lord is redeeming us from our natural fathers and redeeming us to himself, who is the great father. The father of all. He's the father of light. No matter where you're coming from, he has worked redemption for us. And you can assess that redemption no matter where you're coming from. Fathers are very, very important. They should be honored. So this day we honor our fathers. Thank you for being there. Let's put our hands together for our fathers in the house. Thank you, sirs. Thank you for your labor of love over us. We appreciate you. The Lord will keep you, sirs. The Lord will help you to see the, see the way he sees and act the way he acts. It takes a lot of learning. Our prayer for you, sirs, is that you will learn of the Father and you'll be able to deliver appropriately in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate the set man of the house this morning. My dear pastor, Pastor Dimeje Lubadibo. Thank you for the labor in this house. To be a father in this line of fatherhood is no joke. You must be a father under the father. 
so that he can raise children unto the father. He's not raising children for himself. He's raising children for the father. So everyone in this house, you are being raised for the father. Thank God for your life, sir. The Lord will keep you. Your feet will not be taken in the mighty name of Jesus. When you have a father, you also need a mother. Yeah. That's the wisdom of God. Let's appreciate God for our mother in the house. <laughs> Pastor Fesaya Lubadibo. Thank you so much, Ma, for the labor. Your husband said something yesterday after I finished. He said he was hearing your voice. There's a way we women just come. Go to the point. Let's sharp, sharp. Let's do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That was a time in church I asked, who do you love more? <laughs> Daddy or me? Daddy! I say, yeah, it's always like that. <laughs> because it's the face of mommy that you will see. Whereas the mommy is doing the bidding of the daddy. <laughs> yes, sir. We are just doing their bidding. Unfortunately, you are the ones you react against us. <laughs> But we are not doing anything of ourselves, you know. We are just trumpeting what has been put into us so that we can help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's okay. We are good with it. It has always been like that. Always. When we were grown up, it was like that. In my house, we want to go and take something. Just to carry it. You go and meet mommy. Mommy. We want to go and meet daddy. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to say. She said, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah, let's go. She will follow us. We'll get to daddy. We are the one that we are going to talk. It's not, she's not going to talk. She just follows us. Ah, daddy, you see, this is, daddy said, no. Ah, daddy, daddy said, no. We will leave the place. We will go back to mommy. I see she's the one at fault. Why did you follow us when you know you can't talk? Uh, and she's like, you see, I cannot do it, anything against your father. Uh, I used to wonder then. Yeah, then where? But now I understand the mystery. She has to be there to support her husband for the children to be well raised. If that is not there, we'll be spoiled. Every child feels I know what to do. I have my plan. I have, you have visions. You, you've already seen the vision. You see how you're going to run it to the end. But then they have experiences. They know it doesn't work like that. One plus one is not always two. At times, one plus one can be one. One plus one can be three. So they know from experiences. So don't be angry at them. Go back and ban no sorrow. Kinori, tough is obey. When you do, do that, you are learning wisdom. Don't throw away their words. They are old school. Ha. Hey, hey. Old school that helped them to stand and they are still standing today. That's a good school, though. Let's learn from that school. There is no point you get to that you stop learning. Christ said, learn of me. So if you can't learn, you can't become Christ-like. You learn all your life long. If you stop learning, you stop dying. So you must keep learning and learning and learning. Hallelujah. So I'm still going back to parenting this morning. Thank God for this opportunity to just be able to round up the whole thing. Thank God for that which you're doing because it's a major thing. It's major. We can't overlook it. We can't downplay it. Now, when, when you're a parent, your, one of your duty is to protect. You protect the children, whether they're biological or spiritual. You protect them. You lead them. You're a leader. And a leader must know the way. So you can't lead without learning. 
You can't lead without knowing. They can't lead us to the Father without knowing the Father. So you lead them, you lead children, and you also train them. Hallelujah. This is a very, very essential. You protect them from evil. Because you have walked the path. You know the danger points. You know the potholes on the road. They, they don't know. Um, you know the Bible say, Gigi, let's say, Gijo, let's say, don't yo. Eh. Because you don't know, you will fall. And the fathers are there to help you. Your parents are there to help you to stand. It's not that you will not fall. But when you fall, they are there to carry you. They are there to help you. They are there to teach you. They are there to show you what you should do at every point in time. And when they are saying in a time, it does not sound reasonable. It sounds as if, what are you talking about? But they have seen it all to a level. And the mistakes they made, they don't want you to make the same mistakes. Some of us made some mistakes that we learned from. Ma, it's now wisdom for you to learn from our own mistakes so that you will not fall into the same pitfalls we fell into. So that you can know what we are talking about when we are leading. We're not just leading. At times we just shout. I wonder why they're shouting, especially mothers. Some children will tell you, Mommy, why are you shouting? Yes. These are our children, very bold. <laughs> yes, they mean it, why are you shouting? There was a day in the house, myself and my husband were talking, and we're talking, our voice just went, we were not fighting, we were discussing, but the voices were sounding ga ga ga. And my son came, why are you fighting? <laughs> ah, we came down immediately. No, we're not fighting, no. Ah, hey, <laughs> hey, fight, ke. It's just any way you die aggressive. What for? Can't you talk quietly and pass on your information? <laughs> Must it be that loud? That's what he's saying. And immediately, I want to know the question. Ah, his wisdom, sir. We, we, we're, not, we're not fighting, guy. We're not fighting. We're just discussing. You know, so that means they are observing you, they are watching you, they are seeing the way things should be done, and they expect you to do the same. So when you tell them, children, you don't shout at yourself, then you don't have the right to shout at yourself. Because if you can't, we can't shout at ourselves, you also cannot shout at yourself. So you don't just say what you, mean what you say and do it likewise. That's what they're telling you. In those days, you can't ask your parents your questions. Ah, kilo you. But these days, they will ask you. Kilo you? well, <laughs> they are coming with light. They are not bothered about your past generation. This is their generation. And in this their generation, there is light. And because there is light, they want to know. And if you don't tell them, go and ask questions outside. So if they not bring something that is contrary to your house into the house, don't be angry. Because when they ask you the question, you did not answer. Don't tell them, keep quiet. Don't shout on them. Tell them. The question might sound stupid. But explain to the child. And it will come to respect you. Because at that time, they are in the molding stage. You can mold them. You can tell them things and they believe you. Because you are their, they are, you are their number one teacher. Hallelujah. And that's why they can get to school and they teach them something. They come back, mommy. <laughs> Our teacher said this, oh. Because you have said something before. But if you have not said anything before, they will just take in hook, line, and sinker. The teacher said it, so the teacher is right. But when you are prepared, you have the opportunity to prepare them before they go to school. So use that opportunity to put tangible things into them. They will not forget. The funniest thing that they do, you are talking, you are not talking to them, oh. you are just talking, and they are sitting. Don't deceive yourself and feel they are not listening. Everything you are saying they are picking, the day they are going to use it for you, 
That's when you will know they heard every single thing you said. So whatever you don't want them to know, don't say it before them. Even with your friends, don't say it before them. It's the things you want them to know that you should keep saying around them. Because consciously or unconsciously, they are picking those instructions. Amen. So it's good for us any in life to know that we are responsible for these children. It's good for us to know it. To know that you have a responsibility that heaven has given to us. And we must not take that responsibility for granted. But let's go to Psalm 127, verse 3. Psalm 127, verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Children, no, just three, are an heritage of who? Of who? Of who? It says, what it means is, these children, they don't belong to you. They are not yours. They are an heritage of the Lord. They belong to him. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Reward, no fish. So he says, ah, oye, omo, omo, bicho. Just reward. The owner owns them. So as you are raising them, you are raising them for, you are raising them for the Lord. So he's going to hold you accountable because they are his. So that means you can't put just anything inside of them apart from what he has to give them. So you must know what he has to give. So that you can give it to them accurately. When you get married, in Ephesians, it talks about your own wife, your own husband. It did not say your own children. So what you have in your marriage is your husband. And the husband, what you have is your own wife. He has the children. So when you get married and they are not coming early, don't be discouraged. Don't trouble yourself. They are not yours. It's difficult, but that's the truth. How oh, my child? How oh, my child? How oh, my child? It's not your child, though. And the way God does things, if he wants them, he will take them without your permission. If you stand in their way, he can remove you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You need to know this. You need to have this understanding. You need to know this. You need to know this. Many don't know this. Many thought they are the owner of children. You need to know I am the owner of children. I come for them when I need them. You are just a steward. You are a steward to help me grow them. You are a steward. You are not the owner yeah. of those children. 
you need to know this. Many parents have fought me. Many parents have stood my way. Many parents have stood my way. Satan has used them to fight me. Satan has used them to fight me. Satan has used them to fight me. When I come for what belongs to me, to use them for what I have brought them for, Satan used the parents against me. Satan used the parents against me. See, the Lord, you are in a place of light. I don't want you to do the same. I don't want you to fight me. I want you to raise them for me. I want you to raise them with understanding. I want you to come to me to take things for them. I don't want you to fight me. I don't want you to yield yourself to Satan to fight me, to fight me, to fight me. Do not fight me. Raise my children for me. They are for me. Hallelujah. Lord, you grant us the wisdom, God, to be able to do that which are opening to us. As far as the flesh is concerned, it's not easy. But you must go above flesh. Because that's what he wants. He wants his children. Hallelujah. And like the prophecy says, we need to go to God to learn how to raise them. I tell people, I said you are a caretaker. If you are the caretaker of a house, the house does not belong to you. You only care for that house to maintain it for the owner of the house. So see yourself as the caretaker for these children. So your own is to help to raise them for the owner and raise them well. He said the fruit of the womb. Children are the fruit of the womb. Is his reward. Hallelujah. The fruit of the womb. He owns all. He can decide to give you five. Please give back to five. Yes. Yes. Some of us are laughing. Nigeria is talking. But one thing we should know is this. See, this ability of I have two, I have one, I have two, is actually fear. If he supplies, he will provide. We have been called into a life of faith. Now, for example, you and your husband, you are two. You get back to two, you have not increased anything. Yes. Yes. You just replaced yourself. You have not added anything to the population. Yes. It's sounding as if <laughs> Nigeria that way. Are you living in the economy of Nigeria? You didn't answer that question. Are you sure? Then you should be able to live by this life. It's a faith life. And that's how to, to multiply. You see, if we don't do that, okay, we are laughing. The Muslim, a man can have four wives. Four, 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 four. Eloni, yeah? 16 from a single family. That naturally they are making population for themselves. If you are not careful, Christianity will go into extinction. Yes. That's the truth. Just me and just two children and we just go around. It's not civilization, it's death, oh. Is death. This understanding that God is bringing at this time, I know if we had it earlier, we would have more than three. Moses would tell a couple in the church, the least you can have is four. The reality is this. The reality is this. It must dawn 
on you that they are not yours and the owner will provide for all of their needs. You will not go begging over them. It's a life of faith. He will make all things available for them. You don't need to believe and step into it. It will take a reorientation. And one of our major problems is this. We got married too late. Too late. If you start giving birth by 21, successfully will be married before 30. Yes. And the earlier, the easier. The earlier, the easier. And it will be easy for you to raise them. You will have the strength to do so. No way you're supposed to become a, be a grandmother, you still have a child. Then it will be difficult. Because biologically, you're not even supposed to have children at that time. Biologically, you're not supposed to have them. Because the body, the energy you need to run around, you don't have it again. See, anybody can go to, I'm going to do a declaration of age or your swear the David and say, you are 10 years younger than who you are. <laughs> but your body will not respond to that. Your body will show your age. But when you give back to them early enough, see, so many things waste their time in Nigeria. Asu is doing another one now. <laughs> Those who are supposed to have finished from school, they are still in school. But you know it's possible to get married and be in school. Yes. School does not have to stop your natural calendar. You be in school, you give back to your children. When you start is when you start. Some people will finish children before they go back to school and start school. Because it has wasted time. But it, so, the thing is hard, you know, but it's possible. It's very, very possible. You don't have to keep marking time because Nigeria is marking time. Ah. If you follow Nigerian calendar, ha. Ah. Hey. Please, if you are still in school, maybe you are in part two or part three, and you have somebody to marry, go ahead and marry you. Yes. Yes. Consult your pastor and carry your parents along. Yes. It's possible. If you can be learning, you can marry and start giving back to children. So many of you are doing good business in school. So many of you are not even depending on your parents. If you can earn, you can raise children. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you're raising children will not be that you're waiting and um, you're now 30. So many women now have problems with fibroid. And what's the cause? Majorly. One of the causes is late marriage. Womb has a time to carry children. If it's not carrying children, it will carry something. Majority. That's one of the reasons. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You are wondering what they are they saying now. <laughs> ah. You see, our life must not be directed by Nigeria. Our lives should be controlled by God. Our lives should be patterned by the Lord God himself. How do you think Mary was when she had Jesus? You think she was 30? <laughs> she would be around 17 or 18. That's the truth. That's the truth. Because she was betrothed. She wasn't even married. But she has been betrothed to get married. And God went to look for her. For her to help to carry the Savior. You know, if she was, if her mind is not developed and she's not getting ready for marriage 
And they now bring that to her. She will just reject it. Say, she'll be confused. You won't know what to do. But because she's prepared to be married, that was when, when the message came, she could receive it. She was ready for it. So that's the way they were trained. In Nigeria, we still say, Omoke Kereni. Tati, Omoke Kereni. Tati is no longer a child. Is <laughs> My husband says she's a grandmother, Tati. <laughs> so we have to have a reorientation. We must first of all accept it that it's possible. Now, if you accept it that it's possible that you can marry early and give birth early, then you can go to your parents. But if you are not convinced, by the time you get to them and they bring their own, you can't bring your own, you'll be defeated. And you go and sit back. But when your mind is developed, you tell your daddy and mommy. You, see, marriage does not have to, you don't have to take big haul. See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The money you don't have. Don't use to please people that they don't have anything to do with you. You can have a marriage inside your father's parlor. After you have gone to court. And instead of wasting that money to feed unnecessary people. Use the money to do business. Nobody will ask you in later in life how many people were in your wedding? Pastor Shambi Rini. See, we spent money. We killed 10 cows. We have a Shabi. You have this, especially women. My friends, the train, the train to where? We, we concentrate on unnecessary things and leave the major things. You concentrate on wedding and you leave the marriage. What happens in your marriage is not dependent on what happens in your wedding. To have a successful marriage, you must know what to do. It's not the different kinds of ashabi that people were in the place. It's not that. So you can easily have, it's not difficult to be married. Do the wedding, sharp, sharp, continue the real thing, which is marriage. Wedding is just a stepping stone to the marriage. So don't waste time on the stepping stone. Do it, sharp, and do the real thing, which is marriage. And if your parents said, you see, I want to call the whole world. Mommy, I don't know you. But left to you, you want something small. Just with the people that love you and you love that matters to you. It will make the day meaningful and joyful. In so many marriages, the, the couples don't even know most of the people there. They are your mother's social club somewhere. Your father's international club somewhere. All over the place. You don't even know who is sitting. Who is who? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so please, I hope you are learning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going back to parenting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A mother has to be disciplined to discipline a child. A mother. You don't have to be weak-willed. Dis because if you are not disciplined, you can't discipline a child. So you have to work on yourself to be disciplined. 
And part of the way to learn discipline is when you're giving instruction, do it. When you're giving instruction, do what? Do it. It will help to break some things that came with you that were not dealt with. So you must be disciplined. You must know what to do. You must not be a confused person. Mothers especially. You can be soft-hearted. A woman, you know you are soft. Weaker vessels. Before you talk, you say you are a weaker vessel. I tell people. Yes, the Bible says you are a weaker vessel. But men are also weak vessels. So nobody is strong. God is the only one that is strong. Yeah. Eh, eh. So all of us go under the one that is strong. So don't, for strength, so don't just stay there and say, you see, we are weaker vessels. No, 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 no. As far as the spirit is concerned, there is no female Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost you have, your husband has. The only thing that I say you are weaker is because of your frame, your body frame. Your body frame is not your person now. Is it your person? Your person should be strong and you should know what to do. It's when you don't know what to do that you are confused. You want to beat a child as a mother. And ch children, they can be very funny. When they see Ken, they just start crying. And they are seeing they cry. The cry. This thing is already touching you. He's playing you. He's not sober. He's not. If he knows to be sober, why did he misbehave? So when you want to cane him, cane him. Don't be wicked because he's crying and he has touched something in your heart. Your heart has already moved. Ah. No, 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 no. It's not done. When you want to kill him, kill him. And his punishment you want to give, give the punishment. Do it the way you want it done. Not based on the child. So next time when you say no, the child knows his no. Mommy or Nigba, that's better. Or don't, your child has misbehaved. Instead of you to punish, say, we are waiting for your father. So, father, I like him. No, you don't do that. Punish the child. Let the child know that mommy can also do like daddy. So he will not have a hiding place. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mothers, we are so wonderful. God has blessed us. Very good heart. Lovely. You know, you can be tender. Good. But that you are tender is not that you are foolish. You should also learn to thunder. Yes. God is tender and he's thunder. Yes. He's a lion and he's a lamb. So the making of Christ is in you. So you must be like your father. And don't feel like, am I not being too wicked? Your heart is already condemning you. You're feeling guilty. Oh, my head is so true. You need to pray for your heart. The heart. That heart will be strengthened. And you cannot grow or raise your child alone. I said this yesterday, but I want to resurrect it. Let others also help you with the raising of these children. Open them to people. Open them to our community. The Lord is helping us raise a safe community. Is helping us to raise a safe garden where these children can grow and be lively. And when they come to you and they tell you your child did something, don't say, Laye, Laye, Kesha, mommy. Don't say that. Eh. So, what did you now do? Somebody came to say, you, your child misbehaved. And this. Ma, what did you do? 
You should have disciplined him. You don't, come to come and, you don't need to come and tell me. Ah. She belongs to all of us. We are all parents over her. Or over him. Please, next time, deal, I don't even want to hear, deal with him. Or deal with her. Our children, when they were growing up, we have so many people living with us. If anything happens, the children don't come reporting. Whatever punishment that is melted to them, they do. Because if they come and report, it can even be worse. <laughs> so it's better to even take that one. I know that anybody can discipline you. Anybody can train you. There are some things I might not be able to see. No children can, they, children, they can pretend. They want you to see them as good, 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 good guy, good, good boy at home, quiet, is going, do that, he does it. That's, but that does not mean the child is cool. He can get to school and be jumping from pillar to post. The teachers should be there to help to train them. Your children should not come back home and tell you, Mommy, my, my teacher beat me. Eh? Beat you, K. I did not pay them to beat you. Oh. No, no, no. That's not done. So, your teacher beat you. What did you do? Ah, Mommy, uh, it's, uh, it's not actually me. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, but... Uh, uh, my friend said, eh, I did not even say, oh, but eh, he said it. <laughs> even in that, speak to him if you need to be can him again on top of that. So that next time, he will not come and tell you unnecessary stories. Because if they know you are there to just pet them, they just come around. They want to be good boys and good girls around you, but it's not true. Hallelujah. Our community is very, very important. Our community is very, very important. You should feel safe. Maybe there are brothers in the house, a family in the community that are very close to you, and you are close to them. You should feel safe to release their, your children to go and have a weekend with them and just go and play with their friends there, especially if they have age mates in the house. Let them go and just play there. The weekend and they come back. Go on Friday, maybe return on Sunday, meet you in church. You should feel safe doing that because we have a safe environment. We have a safe environment. So we know ourselves. But my brother and my sister, if your life is still hideous to the community, you are not part of it. Too. Your pastor does not know what goes on in your house. You think you are being spiritual? No, you are being foolish. You are just permitting the enemy to cheat you unnecessarily. Make your home safe. And let people make it open. See, there's nothing that happens in your home. There is a secret. It can only be a privacy. But we don't have secrets in our midst. Your life should be open. Your home should be transparent. Let light shine into all your abode. When light shines, light reveals. And darkness cannot hide there. If your husband is doing something, and you feel, see so that what you are doing, this thing is not okay. No, 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 no. Go and meet pastor. And tell him, I am going to report you to pastor. Because he's our father. So for, for our safety, so that all of us can be okay. Go and meet your pastor. Pastor, my husband did this and did this. I'm sure your pastor will call him. Call, let him come and meet me. But one thing is there. One thing is there. Your home must be under our community. Your husband and yourself, you must have great regard for your pastor. And for your pastor, missus. You must be under. Because that's where safety lies. If you are not under, the life in the community will not get to your home. And nobody will be blamed for it. You will be the one to be blamed. And your children knows. In our house, we do what we like. Oh. Hey. Pastor will say his own. 
when we get home, we know that we will not say, eh, don't mind, Pastor. Pastor is saying his own. You have finished that home. So you are going to raise rebellious children. They will be worse than you. You think he's rebellious? You have not seen rebellion. By the time your children, and they are going to start with you. The spirit will grow and have strength and they will start with you. They will deal with you first. So if you want safety, you want peace, open your house to the community. Hallelujah. Now as these children are growing, like I said, don't expose them to stress. Then let them have house chores they do at home. They must have what they, where to, are they supposed to clean the house? Then if you have people living with you, don't be tempted and feel all the house chores have been shared. So your children are just waking up and sleeping and eating and dropping their plates because people are there to wash it. Ah, you are killing your children and raising other children to be good. So you are doing yourself evil. Your children must know how to do house chores. They must clean the house. When they're supposed to start cooking, let them start cooking, whether male or female. All of them eat together. In my house, all pastor, Fred, pastor Dixon, our pastors like that, they grew up with us. They learned to make a mala. Yes. They make a mala. And cook. Because don't say because they're a man. If it's a man and the wife travels, will he not eat? He will not be visiting Buka. You seen so much to feed. It's not necessary. Will he not go to school? And when he's in school, he'll be going to Buka to be buying food. Ah, that's wasted energy. He must know how to cook soup. All kind of scripture, introduce them, call them, let them see it. And let them learn it. It's for their good. Now when they get married, maybe the wife is pregnant and the early part, she couldn't even stick kitchen. Will he not eat? So he will go to the kitchen and prepare food for himself and his wife. Hallelujah. So it has to do with training. Some of us, even our girls, you don't encourage them to cook. Let them be in the kitchen with you. Don't chase them out. They come, mommy, what are you doing? Can I help you to open? No, 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 no. Just go and play. No. Come and help me to open Maggie. Oh, yeah, start from there. She will open the Maggie. Uh -huh. Okay, mommy, now. Uh -huh. Okay, how many are you going to put there? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to put one because it's not much or half. Okay, she's learning. And they don't need book and paper. As they are saying it, they are picking it. Very fast. So make use of that early age and help them to be responsible in the home. If he's supposed to do a chore and he's not doing it, talk and he's not talking, bilala, sharp, sharp. <laughs> but like I said, don't suffer them with food. Let them eat. Because it's good for their health. They should grow well. So help them to grow well. And Emma Lam more fasting unnecessarily. If they are fasting in the church and the church said, okay, we're going to fast for 12 or seven days, depending on their age, let them do the measure they can do. A, a five-year-old, you expect him to break at six. Ah, ah, that's too much. It can break by 12. By 12. Uh -huh. The more they grow, you increase. So they know that we, as I grow, I become more responsible. I become more responsible. Because they still need to eat well. And when they are eating, make sure they eat well. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, I want to say this to parents. That the room, the door to your room, married couples, 
let it be locked all the time. Don't lock it when you want to have action. Keep it locked. When you are there, just lock it. So they will knock. So, so that the day you now lock, when you want to have action, they will wonder, what are they doing there? They will not ask you. But they will say that. They lock their doors. What is happening? <laughs> but let them be used to it that you always lock your door. So, that will not bring unnecessary questions into their heart. Then also talk to them about their sexuality. Talk to them about their sexuality, their body parts, and tell them the girls in particular, the girls nowadays are in danger species. Yeah. So you should know that. So tell your girls, no uncle, no brother, put you on his lap. Tell them, don't do it. Let them know. You don't do it. Lap is not a, a place to pet children. Hallelujah. So, please also speak to them sensibly. Because at the, this age, they are learning wisdom. They are growing. They are learning wisdom. They are learning decency. They are learning respect. Also respect them. They are learning regard. They are learning judgment. So let them grow with this mindset, knowing that you are raising healthy children in your home. Then there's another thing. If as a parent you did something and it's now wrong, please don't be too proud to say, I am sorry. Tell your children, I am sorry. And when you do that, they respect you the more. They won't disregard you. They know daddy is a human being. Mommy is a human being. They are not God that does not make mistake. So you have to understand that as a human being, if you make mistake, you say sorry. And life goes on. And help them to also accept it. Say, hey, mommy, no, 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 no. Mommy can make mistake. Mommy can make mistake. Daddy can also make mistakes. But we have learned that we have made a mistake and we say we are sorry. It cancels from their mind easily. Hallelujah. Amen. Then do, do not cover them up. Expose them. Expose them. Expose them to the church. Expose them to their teachers. When I say teachers now, I'm not meaning teachers in school, but in their children class, they have teachers. And they have oversight over them. Can expose them to their teachers. You know, you have talked about the particular thing is not changing. Tell their teachers. They will help you to deal with them without any sentiment. No, you can still talk with them based on sentiment. But they don't have that. They don't have that weak part. They are teachers. They want them to be good. So they will help you to marshal and marshal. Because they've been with them. They know who they are and they know how to handle them. Hallelujah. So please. These children, like I said, we are raising them for the Lord. We are raising them for the Lord. And we are going to give accounts. We are going to give accounts to the Lord. So whatever they become, you caused it. You made them like that. So you must put in everything that it's going to take. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, all your resources, you must put it to make sure that these children are well raised. They become responsible men and women that the Lord himself can use for himself. Because whatever training you have put into them, that's what they will live by. That's what you have, you have determined, you have, you have opened a channel for them. You have opened a place and that's where they will follow and the word of God should not be far from your mouth. Because by the time they leave you, they'll still go back and think. So let them have things to think about. Let them have their Bibles. Let them go to ask them questions. Then they come back from church. What have you learned to make sure they're learning? They may not understand what they're learning. 
but let them keep learning. One day, it will be useful for them. Don't keep them away from their Sunday schools. Let them be there with their teachers. Because they know what to do to give to them at that level. And when they come back to you, please build more on whatever they bring. Let them know that the word of God is important. All of us, we are, you know, we are all in God's children at different levels. So we respect God's word. We live by God's word. And not just say it, leave it in their presence. And when they see you doing that, they are encouraged to move on. God bless you.